welcome to this week's video. Today we are going to be talking about why so many e-commerce businesses fail. And then I'm going to give you some tips to ensure that this doesn't happen to your business. So make sure you stick around until the end. Did you know that 22% of e-commerce businesses fail in their first year? That is quite a high number. And you really don't want to be in that 22%, especially if you have just started out. So why does that happen to so many businesses? This has to be the first rule of running a business. Sell a product that people actually want or need. You might have a great idea for a product that nobody else is selling but you still have to ask whether other people will also think that it's a great idea and would actually be willing to pay for it. Or you may have just started a new craft and decided that you love doing it so much that the idea of working in a normal nine to five job now seems extremely boring. But because you've only just started making these products, they might not be the same quality as other things which are already on the market. So how can you fix this? Start by doing some market research around your product idea. Ask everyone that you can what they think and if they would be prepared to pay X amount of dollars for it. Next, ensure that your product solves a problem for the audience that you are targeting. If your product solves a problem, it is more likely to be something that they want or need. There's a couple of things which come under this section. Your actual pricing and your shipping costs. Pricing is something which can be very hard to work out when you are starting a business. And often business owners will just plug a random number out of the sky because they don't know how to do it. But price is something which can easily scare someone away from your store. If your price is too high, they're just gonna walk away. If your price is too low, it can also appear that the quality of your product is low, also scaring people away. Low prices could also result in you not having enough cash flow to actually run the business. Shipping is another thing which e-commerce business owners have to deal with. This, of course, costs money. Money which nobody wants to pay. But it does have to be paid. And shoppers love to see free shipping advertised on a website. But that's a little bit deceiving because somebody is still paying for that shipping. If the business owner has been smart, that shipping cost will have been included in the price of the product. So the customer is paying it without realizing it. But this is not always the case. And the business owner can end up spending most of their profits on shipping if they're not careful. So how do we avoid this happening to us? Set aside an afternoon to really work on your pricing. Do some research into your competition. How are they pricing their product? Do they offer free shipping? How many sales are they making? Do you think their products are worth that price? Now, look at your expenses. Work out what your fixed costs are for the business on a monthly basis. These are things like rent, insurance, utilities, accountants, wages, subscriptions, and anything else that you have to pay whether you are making a sale or not. Add up all of your fixed costs and then divide the number that you have by the number of products that you hope to sell in a month. This then gives you your fixed cost per product. Next comes the variable costs. These are costs which are unique to the product. So this would include things like materials, equipment, 
and the hours that are needed to actually create the product. And also any paid marketing, which is just for a certain product or product range. Now look into shipping and work out how much it would cost to ship each product. Don't forget to include the packaging in this figure as well. Finally, add together your fixed cost per product, variable cost for your product, and the shipping cost. This is the minimum price you can sell your product for without making a loss. The last thing to decide is how much profit you would like to make. This is where the research you did into your competitors will come in really useful. Once you've decided how much profit you want to make, add that figure to your um, minimum price for the product and you have your final price. Marketing is a big part of any business and not having a plan for how you are going to share your product with the world can easily result in no sales. Without sales, you have no money to invest into marketing and you just end up in a deadly spiral. The best way to prevent this is to have a marketing plan. Again, start with a bit of research to find out where your potential clients are likely to be hanging out online. Pick the social media platform where you think you will get the best results and focus on that social media platform to get started. Work out when is the best time to post and how many posts your audience will tolerate in a day or a week. Next, think about the content you are going to share. It needs to be eye-catching and engaging. That means that people are going to stop scrolling when they see your post and interact with it in some way. This could be a like, a share, comment, a save, or a link click, depending on the social media platform. To achieve this, make sure that the content is aimed at your audience and is talking about them or sharing something useful or educating them in some way. Yes, I know you might have a great story about you or your business that you want to share, but you need to find a way to make it relevant to your audience if you want them to engage. Have you ever been searching for something, clicked on a link, and then hit that back button straight away because the website looks shady? This is exactly what happens to badly designed websites. People don't stay there long enough to actually purchase something, especially when another shop selling a similar product is only a few clicks away. With all the drag and drop website builders out there these days, it's actually pretty easy to design a strong and inviting online store. You just need to have the right content to put on it. By right content, I mean photos, graphics, and written content. Your brand needs to be clear in everything you share, and there needs to be consistency across all elements of the website. So again, create a plan for how you want your website to look. Think about what you want to say and how you can do that through the photos as well as words. Remember, people are always looking at the photos before they read a paragraph of text. If you want to learn more about taking standout photos of your products, please go and check out the other videos on this channel. And don't forget to subscribe to get notified when I put new videos out as well. I also have a Facebook group where I'm always sharing lots of tips and tricks to improve your photos. The link is in the description for that. So that is it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you again next week. Bye bye.